Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my guide to Never Reap, one of the two expert dungeons in Heavensward. This dungeon can be unlocked after completing the main story and traveling to Ogzundu to accept the quest, Reap What You Sow. It has a minimum item level of 145 to enter and drops item level 160 gear. In addition, it also drops 80 tomestones of law. This dungeon consists of three boss fights. To skip to a specific boss, please use the annotations in the top left hand of the video. At the start of this dungeon, an NPC will give you five thunder eggs. You just use these on the cloud altars to progress when you get to them. The trash here isn't anything special, but keep in mind that if you are in a group of I-145 players, that everything in this dungeon is going to die real slow, so you may want to pull smaller groups. Other than that, it's mostly enemies you've dealt with before. Watch out for those tornadoes though, as just like in Bismarck Hard Mode, they'll knock you up in the air and deal some damage. Pull mobs into this little area near the treasure coffer right here for the first two packs, and then towards the west wall when you get to the Wamura. Finish off the last set of trash and move on to the first boss, Nunyanunk. Nunyanunk is a fairly straightforward boss outside of his primary mechanic. Several times throughout the fight, he'll shroud the arena in a mist that deals increasing damage over time the longer it remains on the field. At the same time, he shrouds a shadow of himself in it that you must run around the arena and step within his circle in order to attack him. Your goal is just to kill his shadow before the dot becomes too much, and then the boss will return to the arena. He also shoots AoEs at people and summons feathers that need to be killed quickly. If the feathers don't die fast enough, they do room-wide AoE and inflict vulnerability up, so deal with them quickly and Nunyanunk will go down quickly as well. The second set of trash is mostly made up of Voodoo and their totems. Again, large HP pools on these enemies in I-145 gear, so deal with them carefully. The biggest thing here is that there are two sets of two bees. These bees do use final stings, so since you're probably in I-145 stuff, take them on one pack at a time, which will be two bees at a time, to make sure that your tank lives to see another day, unlike what you're seeing on the screen right now. There's also a treant that doesn't really do anything special. Deal with a few more mobs and move on to the second boss, Kanuvanu. Kanuvanu is also a relatively simple boss. His only major mechanic is Sacred Totem and Totem Chant. When Kanu casts Sacred Totem, a totem will drop on the head of every marked party member. When he casts Totem Chant, any totems in the marked AoE when the cast finishes will turn into an enemy, granting Kanu invulnerability until they are destroyed. These totems have low health, but can drag the fight on unnecessarily long. To prevent them from spawning, players can actually pick up the Vanu totems by clicking on them and moving them out of the circle AoE. It's best to try and keep them spread apart as best as possible when you're dropping them, but expect to have to pick up quite a few totems during the fight. Move the totems and kill the boss to move forward. The last few trash bowls have water pillars that blur your vision and deal damage over time if you stand in them, so be ready to move whenever one spawns under you. Other than that, it's just a bunch of adds. I recommend killing the Hakulaks first, as they eventually use an AoE vulnerability up on a party member that can make this trash harder than it needs to be. There's also a couple of Dalmels, but nothing special. Kill everything and move on to the final boss, Wakion. Wakion isn't too complex of a fight, but he sure knows how to annoy you. Keep in mind that you can fall off the arena, which will result in instant death. He occasionally hits the tank with a cleave attack and summons water sprites on marked players that you'll need to kill. He can also summon tornadoes, which do exactly what they did earlier in the dungeon. The annoying mechanic is really his Divine Gale phase. The boss becomes invincible and slowly hovers around the arena, dealing damage and knocking back anyone who he makes contact with. At the same time, he summons four Divine Gales, which you just need to kill in order to end the phase. When all of the Divine Gales are dead, Wakion will stop where he is, lose his shield, and prepare a giant room-wide AoE knockback. Just make sure your back isn't close to a ledge and this knockback won't kill you. It's a pretty long fight, and as his health drops more, he uses more and more tornadoes as well. But just don't get knocked off, and it should be an easy win. Thanks for watching, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.